Hello viewers and welcome to another exciting episode of She Is, the show that empowers women all over the world to believe in themselves and set out to achieve their dreams despite whatever challenge that comes their way. The show is proudly brought to you by Smile GH Photography. Smile is a production house that are experts in the production of every event, be it weddings, outdoorings, photo shoots. Just call them on 024-0081-636 or 026-1089-346. Also, the show is supported by Tim Templacy called Templacy is the home away from home. If you want a place to relax with the family or a place to have that conference meeting, Templacy is the right place to be. You can contact them on 0244-730025 or 0244-292520. Templacy is located inside Jolo, right opposite the Embassy of Equatorial Guinea. My beautiful outfit is by Smart Trends. You can look for them on Instagram at smart underscore trends or you can call them for something like this on 0271381428. Also, thanks to Queen Cash Kitchen for always providing food for my production team. You can contact Queen Cash for any kind of food, soup, stew, beverages on 057-591430 or 050-322-7012. My name is Richmond Opon from Pong. After the break, we get to know our guest. Welcome back. So today on the show, we have Miss Emmaline Data. She is the Human Resource Manager for EIB Network. When I talk about EIB, name them GH1, Star FM, and a whole lot. Hi, Emmaline. How are you? Hi, Rich, but I'm good. And you? I'm fine. You look so pretty. Thank you very much. And kudos to your makeup team. They actually did all the glam magic on oh, me. Oh, they really did you good. Good job. <laughs> all right. Tell us, who is Emmaline Data? Um, Emmeline is a versatile woman, okay. multitasking, um, a woman who is interested in developing people, okay. helping them in, in discovering their passion, their purpose, and uh, help, uh, helping them to walk through their journey to achieve their goals, bearing in mind that, you know, achieving your goals will make you face challenges, exactly. and a lot of people find it difficult to, you know, navigate through change, so you find me coaching, mentoring, supporting young people, professionals and students, you know, to achieve their God-given dreams. So you find me, because I'm also people-oriented, you'll find me, you know, it's amazing how your she show, she, she shows that by empowering women. So you find me empowering people, developing mm -hmm. people, helping people to grow, to be better people than who they are. Now, one would think that for someone who would want to empower women or people has a personal experience. Can you tell us about that if you have... Absolutely. Um, as you may be aware, your purpose or passion is stemmed from your problems. Yes. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I mean, in the past, I've had to have my own challenges. It doesn't mean I don't have any. But then I think God qualifies you after he's taking you through fire. And then he's like, okay, you're ready to also help people walk the walk. Yeah. So um, I've had my issues of low self-esteem experiences. Um, I've had my experiences where I was suicidal. Wow. And uh, this was because life wasn't working for me the way I wanted to. Um, I, in the past, like over two decades, I think that, oh, sorry, I'm not that old, <laughs> a decade and a few, few years, um, I've had to go through failure. Okay. And uh, for anybody who's alive, the taste of failure is very bitter, especially if you don't know the purpose of failure in your life. So. Exactly. When you're growing up, discovering yourself, one of the things you have to do is to fall down a lot of times. And so I had a lot of failure experiences in my past. And because of that, being a woman who I think by default, my personality is a, a, a goal-getting uh, oh, personality. And so every time you don't achieve your goal, it's like something on the inside is dead of you. So I remember when I was trying to get into the university after my secondary school. Um, I schooled in Nigeria. I mean, I, I grew up in Nigeria, basically. Okay. And uh, I kept on failing because I couldn't get maths right. And this was because I believed I was supposed to be a medical doctor. I mean, coming from a medical home, my mom, a midwife, my late dad was a doctor. So being a firstborn, I felt, okay, let's walk the step of daddy and mom. But I prefer to be a doctor, not a nurse like my mother. 
And uh, I couldn't do well in chemistry and math. And those two things without it, you can't make it. Exactly. For some funny reason, I just thought I should just keep on resitting because I felt I was supposed to be a medical doctor. Bearing in mind, I didn't, I didn't know who I was supposed to be. Yeah. So I kept on failing for years until it got to the ninth year of my life. Ninth year, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Some do it two times and they are tired. And they are tired. I got to the ninth year and I was like, okay, Emma, something is wrong somewhere. Let me, get, let me let you know that within those nine years, I was actually coaching young people. I started my coaching experience after secondary school. So I joined a young youth organization where we help people discover who they are and empower them. I was empowering people and I was failing. These people were going to school. <laughs> I was helping them find their way and I was failing. We're lost. And I had my, so I had a private battle. You know when you are at the forefront, you're supposed to be a leader. Nobody knows your personal cry, yeah. except those who are yeah. leaders with you. So I remember when I thought that, okay, Emma will never be a graduate. I would end up just doing what I'm doing and that would be the, it, it, that, that would be it. But something on the inside refused to just allow Accept me to give up. That. So I kept on, but don't forget, I was also failing because I didn't understand that there was a way to study. Okay. I thought that study was just true pass. Oh, challenge. And and just, besides, I'm a Christian, so if I just yeah, bring, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, for what? <laughs> <laughs> I, it kept on happening until... God said, Emma, you know what? You, are, you don't know who you are. You don't know what you're supposed to be. So the course you are taking is not what I've called you to and do. It's not you. And I go, okay, God, I'm tired of failing. What am I supposed to do? And then he didn't actually answer me. So what happened was my mom, who always wanted me to come back to Ghana, for some reason, she wanted me to school here. And I said, no, I didn't want to leave Nigeria. That was all I knew. I wasn't ready to change. Then she got me a school here. And I just, out of frustration... Richmond. I said, you know what? I'm tired of this situation. Yeah. Whatever will give, make me achieve my goal, let me take it. And that was when I discovered human resource management. I never knew that thing existed in my life. Right? I know what so I wanted about. to be a psychologist because okay. when I learned about it, it basically had to do with, you know, peop, um, uh, behaviors of people mindset, and have, yeah, mindsets and do. helping them to develop and all of that. And I couldn't get admission to any school that would give me psychology. So human resource was the closest. Okay. Because in human resource, you learn a bit of psychology. Yeah. That was how my life began. And so from all that, my experiences of failure, then I got to know that I'm supposed to help people actually work. So you see me in human resources. I'm a personal good coach. I, I support, um, uh, I'm a public speaker as well. Yeah. So you see me motivating everyone or speaking on in areas that maybe I think people need to develop knowledge in exactly. and all of that. So that is actually where my passion came from from failure wow now i've watched most of your um speeches i mean your seminars and then you mostly talk about personal branding i mean yes yourself yes. why that you see you cannot after discovering your purpose not package yourself or communicate who you really are the reason why you called me here is because you have identified my brand exactly you get a point there are several if you go on google right now we type richmond there are several people with the name richmond Maybe we could put your, what's your surname? Upon from Upon, uh -huh. we put Upon from Upon, right? Yeah. Put your full name there. There are many Ghanaians that might have your name. Yes. What will make you stand out? Okay. She, you show. The hosts. You understand me? Yeah. That, there's no, we don't have two rich months handling this show. Yeah. You're the only one doing this show. You've been able to successfully communicate who you are. That is because what you want to achieve in life exists in the hands of somebody who is a decision maker or a group of people. The moment they want to find a solution to a problem, who comes to mind? Is it you or the other Richmond? Personal branding is, is that unique value um, of promise, meaning that you're going to deliver what the expectations of your clients are. So as I sit down here, if you call me here to give a story of my life and to share my story with people, and I end up saying something else, I have failed you. Yeah. But because you, I have proven via what you've seen yes you have consistency went. clarity and that's the problem people think that personal branding is just making up taking a lot of photo shoots and put on instagram no that is not personal branding that aids personal branding if you don't know who you are your personal branding activities would fail okay. so i want to be a public speaker but you find me twerking on instagram am i a public no, speaker even though we have some of the people doing those crazy stuff who also decides to be motivational speakers. That's their strategy. But then you confuse people at yes. the end of the day. So you need to be able to identify your calling. So that's why I always start with identifying your purpose. Then there's what we call personal mastery or self-mastery. Having to know who you are, mastering yourself, developing yourself, and being perfect at what you do. Perfection, they say, is unattainable. But excellence is attainable. 
So the moment you allow excellence in your life, you are working in perfection. You get the point. So personal branding, without that, you cannot be successful in your career. You cannot be successful in your life. Okay? So that is the reason why I am very, very passionate about, about helping people branding. build a personal brand. Now, how many ladies have you coached so far? Because Do you really want me to count? <laughs> I don't think I, may, I have any. <laughs> how do, thing is, how do you feel knowing that you've impacted so many lives? My God, it is the apex of fulfillment for me. I mean, the joy I have is that I have been able to make somebody discover who, who she is or who he is. One of the testimonies I can share is that I have met people who were also suicidal. Okay. So they come to my inbox. Nobody, they all don't know me. I was suicidal at the point. They just feel this is a woman they can talk to. And at the point, they tell me they want to die. Wow. As in, you see somebody on Instagram. Uh, sorry, you, you en engage someone on Instagram saying, I want to die. This is my problem. And the challenge is, how do you know that as I'm chatting with you, yeah, the no, person no, no, will yeah. not kill himself yes. or herself? Because even in reality, when you see people trying to jump, jump roofs or jump bridges people try to speak to them but they don't listen they still jump so yeah. um the fear in my heart is i'm like you know what god this is your thing help me say something that would minister to this person that will make the person change his or her mind i used to be there before you saved me help me and then today you should see them they are motivating people as well wow. and so that is why we do what we do wow yes wow. yes the conversation is getting interesting and so we continue after the break this is she is Welcome back. This is She Is, and we are talking to Miss Emmeline Date. Okay, Emmeline, now how do you juggle um, coaching and then being an HR manager of EIB Network? <laughs> okay, so I tell people that if you love what you do, you, whatever, no matter how many things you handle, you, it won't be stressful. It's a matter of life management. I know we all know about time management and all of that, but um, my, one of my role models, John Maxwell, will tell you, you cannot go beyond 24 hours. Okay, of course. <laughs> so no matter how much you try to put, fix your life in 24 hours, if you don't fix your life, you cannot fix your time. Yeah. So it means that you need to prioritize what is more important th to you and what is less important. What can wait? What cannot wait? So uh, my first priority is my, my employer. So as head of HR, I have to ensure that whenever whatever task I've been given, I, I can do it. Thank God my job is not so much. I have to always be at the office now because of COVID-19. Sometimes I'm working from home. A few days I'm at the office when I need to be. Luckily, HR management is related to coaching yeah. because it's people-oriented. So as a human resource professional, I'm supporting my employees to make sure that they achieve the goal of the company. So I end up coaching my employees too. Exactly. So when I'm not working, then I give my time to you know, my uh, private coaching practice. So it's a matter of just timing and being on, 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 on the internet or virtually um, being virtually compliant, everything is possible. Yeah. I mean, I mostly, I don't have it that I can tell you, Richmond, there are many of my mentees I haven't met before in, in person. Online. No. Zoom, WhatsApp, phone calls, Facebook. We've never met before. Some are in Kumasi, some are in other regions, some are in Accra, but we don't see. So it's not a limitation at all. I think technology makes it easy for me to juggle. Yeah. Now, how has social media helped your goal? My God, it is and actually your, what has helped me. And then your advice <laughs> to the youth to take social media. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Richmond, I mean, I met you via social media. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. so um, the point is being consistent in what you do will make people refer you to people exactly. that matter. And I always say be so relevant that when people are looking for solution providers, you are one of the people they call. So when you see me on, on, on social media, my social media platforms, even though you don't find all serious all the time, because sometimes you need to have fun, but you can tell that this is who Emmeline is, yeah. right? I have been able to intentionally craft 
an image I want you to intentionally see. Exactly. So I can come and tell you guys on social media, I am a public speaker, I'm a motivator, I'm a nature practitioner, I'm a leadership consultant. I'm behind. But when I leave, when you, you finish, your, when, when I have left a conversation with you, or maybe I have given you an experience, what is the perception in your mind? Does it correlate to what I want you to know? So when people are on social media, you need to be careful. You see people showing unnecessary pictures, unnecessary videos, and the internet never forgets. You can repent, you can be wayward today, maybe for lack of knowledge you don't know. Yeah. In 10 years' time, you might change. change. The internet will come and remind you. Facebook has a good way of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, two years yeah, ago. Yeah, two years ago. It will always remind you. Even if you delete it, somebody has taken it. Exactly. You don't know who has it. So you need to be very careful with what you put on the internet. Exactly, exactly. Now, what... As how do you feel knowing that um, there's a lot of poaching going on in the media? Yes. As the HR of EIB Network, yeah. there are so many of your staff who have been poached to other media houses. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Is it that you feel you're not working too hard? or What is it? Okay, so in human resource globally, you know, um, generations change yeah. when it comes to recruitment. We used to have the generation x the generation y then i think there was a z or something if i'm correct <laughs> now i'm hearing we have generation millennials <laughs> I keep going the millennials are insatiable and it is of no fault of theirs the world has changed richmond technology has come to make things so glamorous your needs have changed expectations have changed your clients your vendors those who provide services are tweaking everything yeah you need to meet you need to meet up right and unfortunately um your the challenge with employers is that they have a lot of work in ensuring that they meet the needs of their millennials it's not easy yeah it's a it's, it's, it's a work in progress so where you'll have talent that are also limited or scarce so for example you cannot have two or rich ones of course so let's assume she show doesn't belong to you but you are a host here you are so good another person wants you you are that good, but they don't have a double rich, rich month. Okay. So your boss has to struggle to maintain you and not go to maybe employer Z. What is the problem here? Employer Z may have more resources than you, exactly. or they may have a better experience than you. The point is every company has their unique selling proposition, but it is the millennials' needs that determines who they will they choose. Remember, it's about value. Exactly. What value do employers have to give? So if today I am, I, I am with EIB and tomorrow I decide that I want to be somewhere else, it is not because EIB is not doing, doing what I need yes. to be done. My needs have changed. Yes. So in human resources, we try to understand that now the loyalty is not the work of the employee. The loyalty is the work of the employer. If you want to keep an employee, you need to work on the things that will keep your employee loyal to you. Understand too that, for example, there are cases where uh, loyalty may not be the issue. If I have to relocate, maybe I got married, or for some reason my family have to move. There's, the company has done anything wrong. Things have changed. Do you understand? So I think that for us, we have a lot of um, um, the generation we find ourselves in are different. The needs are different. And so obviously, it's very, very common for you to have people moving from place to place. It is not unnatural at all. I've been watching your status a lot, and there was a time you posted something about um, nothing is impossible, it's only an opinion, but not a fact. Can you tell us more about that? Okay, perception they say is true. If I perceive this drink to be green, I don't, no matter what you tell me, it is green. Exactly. And that is what it is, yeah? Because there is what, we, the mind is so powerful. And we, we, I really thank God that God has given us the there was independence to be mentally in the, uh, independent if i could say that you see when you say something is impossible why is it impossible because experientially somebody has told you it's impossible but yeah. have you tried it no god has not allowed human beings to be limited by obstacles he has not made us like that we keep on believing the lie that listen if you didn't work for rich money you work for emily but there's a certain amount of effort needed to push through what we, the problem we also have is that we think that life should be in a particular way. So we have made a plan. For example, in my life, I said it, wasn't, it was not possible for me to succeed yeah. for nine years. I could have believed it. And today you wouldn't meet me. Yeah. But I pushed. My dad, my late dad was one person who kept on pushing me. I said, listen, my girl, I don't care how many times you're failing. You, you are going to be a graduate one day. I just needed to hear that support. And today I am here. If you have God in your camp, there's nothing like impossible. It might not be exactly what you want, but trust me, it's always even better. So it is actually an opinion of somebody's experience, but it is not your reality until you prove them right or wrong. Now, Emily, where do you see yourself in the next five years? This question, 
<laughs> this question people keep asking. I see myself on platforms that give the opportunity to change people's lives. I think that is what I want to do forever. Even if I retire from being a human resource practitioner, I see myself, provide, I see myself providing jobs for people as well. Um, I tell people that, listen, it's not enough for you to be an employee. These days, because of freelancing and the internet, you can also provide you know, virtual jobs for people. Yeah. I see myself giving people hope. I see myself putting people on platforms that are even bigger than myself. Because that is basically what it's all about. Yeah. God has more in stock for me I haven't seen. So I cannot tell you everything I'll be in five years. I'm even looking forward to what God is going to do. I'm waiting for him to unveil it. But I think that whatever God does, it will be on a platform of changing people's lives. Wow. Yeah. How many siblings do you I have? I have two brothers. I'm the only girl, the firstborn. Wow. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Emmeline, it's been nice having you. Thank now your you final much. words to everyone watching you. Failure is not the end of your life. Failure is not fatal. It is only a tool for success. Failure is a very good teacher. It teaches you that at least you're not perfect, so you need to keep learning. Let your experiences make you better. Be positive, but be realistic. Some of us like to build castles in the air. There's nothing wrong, but build it on the castle of, on the foundation of reality. Yeah? Make sure you focus your efforts on mentorship, coaching, learn and relearn, unlearn bad habits. You cannot continue to have the same knowledge. 30, uh, three years ago, what we, we were using is not the same today. Technology yeah. has changed everything. Learn to be agile, learn to be resourceful, learn to be aggressive, learn to be creative and innovative. Be resourceful because the world is not looking for people who want and to take. The world is looking for people who want to give and learn. So always be a thinker. And besides, if you're an African, it doesn't limit you. It is your thoughts that limit you. Wow, I guess I said it all. But after the break, we get to know how smart I guess this on the smartness level segment. Welcome to the Smartness Level segment today with Emmalyn. Okay, Emmalyn, are you ready? On this segment, you answer three questions, and then if you're able to answer all correctly, you get to walk away with something beautiful. Wow, okay, let's go. Okay, so, Emmalyn, imagine you're in the sea, surrounded by sharks. How would you survive? <laughs> in the sea, surrounded by sharks. How would I survive? I'll become a shark myself. <laughs> to be in honest, I don't swim. Mm -hmm. So I don't I can't even imagine how good it's survive because they're going to eat me up, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> okay, Emmeline, so your final answer? Hmm. <laughs> all I can see is just fear of sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Sharks are all around me. Yes. And there is no boat anywhere. So imagine you are, yes. And there is no boat anywhere. No, I'm in the no, middle of the sea yes. where the sharks yes. are. How will I survive? Yes. Wow. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the answer is you just stop imagining. I said, imagine you are in the sea. <laughs> no, but the, I was, then I was right. I imagined I would turn into a shark. It's my imagination. Who says I'm wrong? No, 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 no. That's not what I was looking for. <laughs> but you see, that's your problem. <laughs> we all spoke about perception just now. It's true, though. It's true, So though. I'm sorry. <laughs> I won't give it to you. I said I'll become a shark myself. Okay, okay. You got that correct. So I give that to you. Okay, your second question. How many animals... Did um, Moses take into the ark with him? Moses wasn't the one that took <laughs> animals to the ark. It was Noah. Hey! <laughs> this lady came. Oh. Okay, your final question. Okay. How many months have 28 days? No. A month. How many months are 28 days? Just Feb I think just February in a leap year. No, so, before the leap year. Just one month. When it's mm -hmm. not a leap year. So, your final answer? How many months have 28 days? Yeah, that was the question. Yeah, how many months have 28 days? Mm, I think it's February when it's not a leap year. So that's your final answer? Yeah. I mean, all months have 28 days and more. No. Yes. You can't try that for me. <laughs> no. I just did. No. You know why? I don't, it's not about winning, but it's about 
your question. Yes. So I, February has 28 days. The remainder of the months have 30 to 31 days. No, so how many months? They have um, 28 Your question is more. very ambiguous. No, no, you should have got it. You should have your got question it. is very ambiguous. No, no, If no, I was no. the examiner, I would pass you through February. Hey. <laughs> I used to be a teaching assistant, you know. <laughs> Please, don't, let's not go there. <laughs> All right, Emmaline, thank you so much for coming on thank the show. But when you come on Shiga show, we do not leave you to go just like that. We have something beautiful for you. Okay. And so, this is for you wow oh my yes. goodness so, is that me yes are you I sure <laughs> yes so oh. it reads she is so appreciates you thank you for being an inspiration okay Emma thank you this is oh sorry i think i put my no that's, mic that's okay fine. thank you so much guys i really appreciate this yes, yes. <laughs> And so we wrap up on an amazing episode of your favorite show, She Is, the show that empowers women to take up space despite the challenges that life throws at them. The show is proudly brought to you by Smile GH Photography. Smile GH is an it's a production company that are experts in the production of all your events. So if you want that event of yours captured with style, contact Smile GH on 24 81636 or 26 The show is also supported by Templacy Court. Templacy is the home away from home. If you want a place to relax with the family or a place to have that conference meeting, Templacy is the right place to be. Templacy Court is located inside Jowell, right opposite the Embassy of Equatorial Guinea. You can contact them on 24 Four four seven three zero zero two five or zero two four four two nine two five two zero. My outfit is by Smart Trends. You can contact Smart Trends on zero two seven one three eight one four two eight. You can also find them on social media at Smart underscore Trends. My name is Richmond Oponfrimpong. Until then, see you next week.